to the first episode of Under the Radar. I'm your host, Atul Anija. Now, the reason why we started this program was really to magnify those events or developments which were highly important and perhaps of strategic importance. But somehow they slid under the radar. There are two such major uh, episodes which uh, I thought I'd bring to your attention and uh, hopefully you like them. Now the first one really relates to uh, India's sales of $250 million worth of weaponry to Armenia. Now this is the first time as far as I know that we have struck a deal of that magnitude and significantly this goes to a country like Armenia which has not really been a traditional partner of uh, India but somehow has now become a, a country of great strategic importance to New Delhi. Now, just a bit of a background on Armenia. Armenia was in the midst of a conflict with Azerbaijan and Azerbaijan in turn was backed by Turkey and by Pakistan. On the other hand, Armenia is a member of the Collective Security Treaty Organization. This is like a NATO of uh, the Russians. Uh, and other players apart from Russia who are conducting Armenia have been uh, Iran principally. Uh, but uh, last year when the war was fought, essentially over a territory called Nagorno-Karabakh, it was the Turks and the Azerbaijanis which handsomely won that war uh, in a way and captured a lot of territory. And one of the reasons for that was really use of drones, especially the Meraktar drones of Turkey which played a very major role in decimating uh, the Armenians. So after about a year, it's obvious that the Armenians are regrouping. And for that, they again tapped the Russians. But Russians themselves were involved in the Ukraine conflict and perhaps do not have the spare capacity as they had earlier to really beef up and give Armenia that kind of a punch which can counter Azerbaijan and Turkey and Pakistan combined. And uh, that's where now India steps in. Now there, are, there is a, apart from the commercial element of this deal which I spoke a while ago, uh, there are other aspects of a geopolitical nature which, which are extremely important and I think we should dilate them uh, to a certain level. Now the first is that by engaging with Armenia, India has acquired a leverage in the heart of the Caucasian mountains against who? against the combination of Turkey and Pakistan and Azerbaijan a combined especially Pakistan and Turkey which has been on the forefront to highlight the Kashmir issue and therefore go against India's core national interests but with Armenia being a strategic partner of India and India because of its sale of weaponry having the capacity to influence events has got something to play with when it comes to Turkey and Pakistan uh, in the Caucasian mountains. So that is very very important that India has become a player in the Caucasus. Uh, second thing is that you know so far India's role was essentially, I'm talking about the military role in South Asia, you had the 1971 Bangladesh war uh, and India intervened in 1987 in Sri Lanka. But well, it's really a case when we are going to another theatre altogether. Now, what does that mean? That just shows the aspiration of a new India to go beyond South Asia and show an intent to be a global player. And that is that is exceptionally important. And there's a second derivative. And second derivative is that India is moving while it engages with the US and the, its partners like Australia and Japan, the so-called quad in the Indo-Pacific, it is simultaneously moving in the Eurasian theatre quite prominently with this deal and actually bonding with the other partners of Armenia, may not be directly but definitely indirectly, which are principally Russia and Iran. So this is really an expression of a multi-vector diplomacy, it is an expression of actually deploying a strategic autonomy where you're not going to be a part of any single alliance in the West or 
uh, in, in the other uh, geographical spaces, but really will bond with countries. And that so long as that bonding heals and supports India's core national interests. And therefore, this is for the first time that I can see that it is India's strategic autonomy, which is being expressed in a theater far from India's borders. So therefore this deal, it is not just a deal, but there are other dimensions as well. And when you come to an indirect you know, partnership or unstated partnership with Russia and Iran, now remember both these countries are also part of two major routes which lead to the Eurasian continent. You have Iran as partner of India through the Chabahar route, it goes into Afghanistan and Central Asia. And Russia is a central player in the international north-south transport corridor. So, in a sense, that India's outreach to Eurasia is through Iran and through Russia. Of India's engagement with Armenia is quite likely to support other parallel moves uh, which are going on, especially with Russia and with China. Another major event which went beneath the radar was dramatically underreported was a rift that has been developing between the Chinese and the Pakistanis. Remember, China and Pakistan are known to be iron brothers, but something seemed to have gone radically wrong for when the Shanghai Cooperation Organization Summit took place in Samarkand. Chinese President Xi Jinping is reported to have raised strong concerns about the lack of security provided to Chinese province, Chinese personnel deployed in Pakistan under the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor Project. Now the same sentiment was publicly amplified and reported by the Foreign Office of China uh, on the, uh, when Chinese and Pakistani personnel met on the sidelines of the UNGA in New York. This is highly unusual. Uh, in some would say even unprecedented, when the Chinese have publicly gone and raised their objections with the Chinese, that itself shows the fury with which the Pakistanis are being treated with China when it comes to the security of Chinese personnel. Now, why is it happening? I think there's a backstory here which needs to be explained. And the reason, in my view, is really the strong comeback of the US in the Pakistan equation. That is the Pakistanis are bonding very strongly with the Americans and given the situation where China and the United States are loggerheads, that Beijing has not taken kindly to this open voting of the Americans by the Pakistanis. It has happened when the Pakistanis supported the Americans in the drone strike against Yemen al Zawari which was a very pro-American step taken by the Pakistanis. The Pakistanis then go all out to support the Ukrainians in the war against Russia to the extent that there are reports of aircraft taking off from Rawalpindi and heading towards Romania uh, with uh, loaded with apparently with weapons um, which uh, the Pakistanis have been providing to the Ukrainians. And that is a test of loyalty towards America. So the Chinese are watching what's happening over there. They're also watching that the Americans have released $450 million worth of uh, equipment to keep the Pakistani fleet of uh, F-16 afloat. So that is the backstory. Given this, the, the rift between the Chinese and the Americans, the Chinese are not pleased with the Pakistani action. And that itself was demonstrated, I think, in what happened in Samarkand. I do not think that the Pakistanis, unlike the past, will be able to balance quote unquote their relationship with the Americans and the Chinese. Because this is not a Cold War situation. During the Cold War, the Chinese and the, pa and the Americans and the Pakistanis were allies against the Soviet Union. That equation had been completely smashed. In the current context, there is a polarization between the Americans and the Chinese and the Pakistanis will find it very hard to bridge these differences. We will keep watching on what happened and what unfolds under the radar and you keep watching and keep sending your feedback.